So uh, many thanks to the to the organizers and as well as to the the reviewers. Uh, their comments were very interesting. Oh, let me check the time. Uh, and greetings from from Barcelona, uh, where I'm a, I'm a postdoc researcher in the Geo Humanities Group at the UTF, which is uh, Universidad of Pompeu Fabra. Uh, what I will present today are some preliminary results of an ongoing study on the current state of soundscape and noise pollution regulation in the city of Barcelona. So I do this uh, from an eco-social perspective and my frame of reference, uh, sort of big frame of reference is the 2030 agenda. But what is my, my thesis, so to speak? Well, Barcelona as a big city uh, has come a long way in recent years in the face of the climate challenge. Uh, the council has really done its job. Uh, be that as it may, uh, political conflicts were, uh, which are uh, frequent in the, in the city and the myriads of regulations uh, in the Spanish context is rather difficult in this, in this sense. Uh, and also the lack of collaboration between the um, different administrations condemn many practices to inefficiency or short-term uh, planning. So now, right now, I'm speaking. I guess you can see the, the pointer. Um, I'm speaking from right here, Ciudad Bella, more or less, the Ciudad Bella campus. And I live around here, around the north. And living basically anywhere around here is rather, is rather stressful. Um, what we need, or what do I think we need? Uh, a regulation that is designed from below uh, with citizen participation that fits in with uh, European regulation and that provides answers to the challenges, to the global challenges and milestones of the 2030 agenda. Otherwise, we need a sonic agenda uh, that collaborates, I think, in the, in the construction of a more sustainable, fairer and more democratic city and more democratic society. So this perspective is also must be uh, intersectional. To understand this, uh, this issue, just briefly, uh, we must situate uh, Barcelona in, his, in its uh, regulatory, regulatory framework. Uh, I'm guessing you all know the, the city, I'm sure many of you have visited. Uh, but you may not be aware of, it, of its administrative situation, which is rather uh, complex. Uh, the metropolitan area of Barcelona, which is one of the great Mediterranean capitals, is a densely populated area or region of around 5 million people. Uh, Barcelona City Council and the other cities in the metropolitan area uh, share a sort of supra-municipal organization, which is called Area Metropolitana de Barcelona, with its own, its own competencies in territorial matters, in transport, in energy, uh, waste management, and so on. Above this uh, municipal administration, we have the Generalitat, which is the regional government of Catalonia, which you see, which you see here in the map in, in green. Above the Generalitat, uh, you have the Spanish state government, and above it, obviously, you get the, the EU. So who regulates uh, Barcelona's sound ecology? Well, all and none, in a way. Um, fitting all these regulations in together uh, is certainly complex, and the political conflicts do not help. Uh, since the issue is so closely linked to, to climate change, uh, as you can see in this, in this picture here how, how the quality, how the air quality in Barcelona is. Uh, so as I said, since the issue is so closely linked to climate change, you can imagine that it's a highly politically charged issue. In, in this context, what are the challenges ahead of us? Well, firstly, uh, to connect, as I said before, the global goals, 2030 agenda, with the strategy that the City Council uh, has designed for this purpose. Secondly, uh, knowing how to connect at the global level all the different regulations in a, in a common sense or in a common path. Uh, finally, designing a noise strategy at the metropolitan level that addresses the intimate relationship with, between inequality, exposure, and vulnerability to noise. As pointed out uh, repeatedly, but particularly in in a report, uh, rather recent report by the European Commission itself. Thus, we have the following uh, regulations. Uh, regarding the 2030 agenda, we have the global landmark constituted by the SDGs, uh, SDGs and ambitions and, 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 and sustainable development goals. 
at a state level, uh, the Ministry for Spanish state level, the Ministry for Social Rights in the 2030 Agenda, that's uh, the name of the Ministry. And finally, the, the, the Catalan uh, National Plan for the Implementation of the 2030 Agenda. And finally, the Barcelona own uh, agenda, so the City Hall, uh, City Council agenda, which uh, has adapted uh, 139 out of the 169 SDGs, uh, sort of sub goals to the to the council level. If we if we consider the regulation specifically dealing with noise uh, at Barcelona, it has a plan for the reduction of noise pollution 2010-2020, uh, as you can, you can see here, which hasn't yet been renewed. Um, this document was still framed within Agenda 21, which is the, the, the last one, but in any case, it's very, very interesting since it defined five basic, basic lines of, of action. Uh, one, improving the acoustic quality of the, of the over, urban space. Two, promoting the incorporation of, of acoustic criteria in the design and management of the city. Third, acoustically environmentalizing, if that's, if that's a word, the city council, which means basically to uh, give sort of, uh, promote educational programs and, and so forth for the council staff. Uh, four, involving and raising public awareness of noise pollution issues in the, in the general public and implementing and promoting mechanisms uh, for the control and knowledge of Barcelona's acoustic quality. So we have pros and cons of this, of this document. Pros, uh, it is a pioneering document of the Spanish state, uh, which followed in the wake of a first noise map drawn already in 1990 by, by the city hall. It was guided, uh, this, uh, this plan we're seeing here, uh, by a 20, uh, 202 directive in terms of environmental noise management and the creation of uh, strategic noise maps, that's how they, they called it, and action plans. Which are the, the cons? Uh, well, there's no clear definition of the notion which is central to the document itself and uh, documents that are alike which is the notion of acoustic quality, which is obviously a very difficult thing to define. Uh, it's not particularly ambi ambitious, and its approach is basically quantitative, i.e. it's very focused on just bringing down the noise, bringing down the, the volume, and making acoustic quality basically equivalent to silence, which is, uh, of course, problematic. Um, yeah. the, or, or simply not enough. At the Catalan level, uh, Law 16 uh, uh, on protection against noise pollution, updated in 2009, uh, was in turn articulated with the Spanish noise law, uh, 2003, uh, which was then successfully uh, updated uh, several times. In addition to the noise that is to be expected in the city of Barcelona's size, a city which is also rather important in terms of its industry, communications, tech sector, etc. Barcelona is currently, uh, it realizes a long standing phenomenon, is suffering from over tourism. Uh, at the same time, the profile of, of this very tourism is basically that of uh, sun and beach, i.e., sun, beach, and loads of alcohol, which generates a constantly problem of both gentrification and equally a serious problem of noise and we could say civic coexistence, uh, particularly in, this, in these areas that you can see here. Noise pollution is, is particularly high in, this, in these areas, such as the so-called, as you can see here, uh, Triangle Luric, uh, Triangle Luric, which translates as a playful triangle, um, which is basically an area with, uh, full of bars and, and nightclubs. And the, also the Barceloneta, which is uh, the, the port district, uh, invaded basically by Airbnb. Uh, conflicts, demonstrations, and, and protests in general by the, by the locals are content, constant. For example, as you can see here, prosuroi, uh, prosuroi in Catalan means uh, enough with the, with the noise. So what is the, the challenge? Uh, the challenge is to formulate plans towards a renewed strategy against noise pollution that follows these uh, principles that I consider very, very important. While recognizing and analyzing quantitative data, 
when it, we need uh, qualitative analysis and solutions. Uh, secondly, this design needs to link all levels of government and involve all levels of government into a common destination, ultimately focusing on the public health and welfare of citizens. I want to say citizens, I, I want to say each and every one of the citizens of, of Barcelona. Um, it's also necessary that the approach to this design is ecological, cross-cutting, and therefore interdisciplinary. Uh, the population must be involved in the design of this, the new strategy, so we should do surveys, bigger surveys, we should do studies, we should use citizen science apps, uh, etc. In order to, to do this, and I'm going to hold that, we're in the process of, of analyzing all of this and um, interconnecting all the, the current regulations, just, just the municipal regulation, that in some way or another is connected to the acoustic environment. So you have uh, climate regulation, green spaces regulations, mental health regulations, and all. So I'm trying to map everything together so the tight all in the in relation to, to noise and to noise pollution. Um, we're doing so in, on the basis of five basic lines of action, uh, which is inequality, physical health, mental health, urban planning, pollution, pollution in general, uh, because obviously noise pollution is very related, very connected to air pollution, um, and uh, raising awareness. Um, noise, like noise uh, acoustic ecology in general, is a cross-cutting problem, and it requires a, requires a cross-cutting uh, strategy. If uh, at the EU level, uh, according to, to the European Environment Agency, at least one in five people are exposed to noise levels that are harmful to, to their health, in, even in post-pandemic Barcelona, the figures are in fact higher. You can see in the, in the, in the figure the, below. Uh, not below. <laughs> um, if you check the numbers, you'll find that the people exposed to noise above the 55 dB uh, threshold amount to more than a third of the, of the population. This is obviously un, unsustainable. The effects on, on health are well known, uh, respiratory, cardiovascular, mental health, sleep problems, uh, uh, has pointed out some of these issues, as well as the necessity, I think it was fascinating what he was talking about, uh, the necessity of better uh, measurements. So to, to conclude, and since I'm checking the time, uh, it's urgent uh, to design strategies that, like the pioneering plans, for example, in London or Berlin, acquire the plan of quiet areas. Um, we go beyond quantitative analysis and apply a qualitative perspective that better define what acoustic quality is, which is obviously a very difficult task, while considering a horizon of health equity. Health equity is really important and a better democracy for the well-being of everyone. As I've said, uh, this is a work in, in progress. I hope to get back to you with more results and renewed data. Uh, and hopefully with the collaboration of the, of the City Council, something which we are trying to get, uh, institutions are trying to get directly uh, involved in this in these studies. The, the soundscape uh, perspective presents itself um, again and again in this in this question is necessary policy and it's transversal uh, approach beyond the purely a purely anti-noise strategy as for example Antonella Raditi and, and others have advocated future urban listening uh, must integrate quantitative approaches with qualitative uh, ones when managing our acoustic environment and consider it as a form of uh, urban commons uh, thank you so much